before we get started, talk to us, who are the catalysts? Because you're not a conventional sort of sell side or independent research firm, but you do a lot of interesting deep dives into the cannabis space. Just give us a little bit of a context about the work that you do. Yeah, we were uh, birthed out of Reddit of all places, and we now have a subscription website where we do some deep dives on the top companies, both in Canada and the US and we offer our opinions. Uh, we like to say we read financial statements out loud. Some people don't want us reading them that, that loudly. Fascinating stuff. So there's your, the way in which you were born. The more interesting things you've just been putting out have really been about, well, it coincides very much with the demise of some of the stocks that we're seeing and the performance of particularly Canadian cannabis-related companies. And you're really signaling that inventory here is what's the concern. Supply glut is high on your agenda. Why is this happening? Well, first of all, when Canada went and legalized cannabis, they allowed only flour and a diluted oil form. So no edibles, tinctures, vaping, all the things that in a mature cannabis market add up to about 60% of the market. So uh, part of the problem is we haven't been offering the consumers what they want, but there's another big part of the problem is what the uh, licensed produ producers, the LPs are producing, the consumers don't want. The grade of flour is generally not a grade that you want to s sell for smokable form. So a lot of people have been putting it in the vault and hoping for what we call formats 2.0, which rolls out in December of this year, which are all those other formats. Mm. And a lot of investors, I think, are, are thinking maybe that's going to uh, save what's going on. But our data is showing that we're already harvesting at an 81% total demand rate, and we've only penetrated or displaced 14% of the legal market. So, yes, uh, Carolyn, the inventory is uh, piling up very, very rapidly these days. So, Craig, why haven't we seen a little bit more of those other formats? Because, I mean, the whole idea with some of these co cannabis companies partnering uh, with the beverage companies and just some of the more uh, non-cannabis uh, players out there was that you would have beverages and edibles and other things that would appeal to a much broader audience that didn't want to smoke anything uh, no matter what it was. Uh, when do we get to that point? Well, the first phase of cannabis was rolled out, what, what we call 1.0. That is for a year. So the new legislation drops October 17th of this year with a 60-day window for the products to get queued up and approved by Health Canada such that they can go into distribution late in December. So we're really not gonna see anything really on the uh, shelves till early January. Those formats uh, usually constitute about 60% of a mature market. So uh, Craig, you guys do some very impressive work into the accounting of cannabis companies. And of course, like any other new industry, it has its own quirks that make it different from anything else. And I would encourage people to go check out the Canalyst Reddit page where you really dive into it. For someone looking to see who's gonna survive the turn, who's going to thrive in sort of a, a 2.0, as you call it, what are the metrics that people really need to look for to see who is starting to build up some momentum and operate? leverage well I, I think firstly the first metric is follow the the market share of shipments that your licensed producer makes to retail not necessarily their sales if they come out and say hey we had 20 percent sales that's great that's not necessarily great because last quarter uh, on a quarter over quarter basis the retail shipments were up 33 percent so it's important that you have a measuring stick we provide that measuring stick on shipments um, also sales to harvest and this is a, a metric that might take a couple of quarters to line up if there's some new uh, production coming online but there's a huge glut of inventory right now are you selling a good part of your harvest are you going to be selling a good part of your harvest when it comes to 2.0? The third metric, uh, cash is certainly king. The days of the easy raise are gone, so you have to keep an eye on the cash burn of your investment. Mm. And my absolute favorite is adjusted EBITDA. Um, at the end of the day, 
you, you have to be tracking to a pos positive EBITDA, and on your debt horizon, and the particular company's debt horizon, it has to be tracking to debt, debt service, yeah. or else we're gonna have a lot of debt that's not gonna get refinanced.